Whenever you have a longer web page that includes lots of text, it's often helpful to link to different sections so that when users click, it'll just scroll them to that section. Now we're gonna do this and add some additional features that you may not have thought about before, even if you've used this scroll behavior smooth. Number one, we're gonna add some padding to the very top. Secondly, we're gonna see how this interacts with things like search to make sure that when you're searching text on a page, it actually can quickly jump to that text. And then also we'll pay attention to the user's preferences for whether or not there is reduced motion. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I love to teach web development through realistic project builds. And in this case, we're building out an entire web page where we want things to jump around on the page, but in a way that orients the user. So for instance, when I click on this, it should jump to one of these headers here and I click and instead it just snaps to it immediately. Now there are a couple things we wanna pay attention to. First of all, I want to orient the user by slowly scrolling to that section on the page. Secondly, I want some padding on the top. So let's accomplish those with a couple of nice properties in CSS. So I'm just going to do this on the entire page so that anything inside the page has this behavior. First of all, we want the scroll behavior like that. We're gonna set this to smooth. Now, just with that one change alone, if I come back up here and click this, now you can see that that's exactly what happens. Let's also add one more thing, which would be scroll uh, padding top. And we can set this to whatever we want, like 2RAM or something like that. And I can save this, come back up this way and click here. And now it moves and there's 2RAM from the top of whatever section I'm scrolling to. Now, this will actually behave differently whether or not I'm on mobile or desktop. So maybe I say 4RAM. Well, that looks fine on desktop. But if I go ahead and move this over to a mobile view, let's change this like this. And if I click here, five RAM might seem like quite a bit of space. So let's actually adjust that just a little bit by using a viewport unit that's a little bit more dynamic. So what I'm gonna do is set this to something like five V max. So in other words, it's gonna look at the maximum screen, whether it's the height or the width, and then set it to 5% of that direction. So in this case, five view max, if I come back up here and I click this here, now it moves like this and that looks great on desktop. If I switch over to mobile, it will obviously pay attention to the height rather than the width on setting that. So here I am, I click here and it scrolls so that it's just above and that looks great. All right, so that's what I'm gonna want and that way all of this behaves as we expect. Now we've got a couple things to pay attention to. Number one, if I come in here and again, I open up the console and let's go ahead and get rid of this right here. And then I'm gonna come in here and hit Command Shift P and do render, let's see reduced motion right there. So if I click that, this should implement reduced motion. Now, if I click on this, that means I don't want all this movement on reduced motion. So let's go ahead and account for that. And I'm gonna leave this open so that that temporary setting stays. So I'll come back up here. And what I wanna do is write a media query. So I'll say media, and this is prefers reduced motion. And the setting here is reduce. In fact, let's change it. Let's actually do the opposite. So we'll say no preference like that. And then inside here is where we'll put all of this. So in other words, I'm only gonna do this if they don't have a preference on prefers reduced motion. Come in here like this, and now I should be able to save this. And now when I come in here and click, because I've got a preference set, it should just snap automatically. And if I remove that, and I can remove that just by closing the console for now, come back up top and click, now it should smoothly scroll, which is perfect. And now there's something else we need to pay attention to too. This is basically done, but what I wanna show you is that uh, we do wanna actually think through how this interacts with search. So a lot of times, especially if you have a site that's used by a lot of developers or people who just like to hit Command F or whatever it happens to be on Windows, I forget what that is, um, and type in. So let's search for something. I have the word carrots hidden somewhere in here. You can see that it slowly scrolls to that section. I also have pizza, and again, it slowly scrolls to that. Now, if I search for something that's throughout the page, like let's look for Ipsum, and as I move through these, they'll just slowly kind of pop throughout the page. But even as I'm typing here, you can see that things are just kind of moving around awkwardly. So it also makes it a lot slower if you're searching the page. So for instance, if I were to go ahead and take this off for just a second and save this here, and I come in here instead and start searching for pizza. As soon as I start typing, it just snaps to that automatically. Now here it's catching it here as well. So let's keep that one in view and then do it one more time. I'll come in here and look at pizza and there it is. Actually, let's scroll down so that I can actually move to it on the page below. So pizza like that and it just snaps to it. So it's a lot quicker when you're actually searching without this scroll behavior smooth. So that's one other thing we wanna pay attention to. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove this. Let's just uh, back out of this here. And we're gonna change this just a little bit. And what we're gonna do is change this to focus within. 
In other words, only when I'm focused within the HTML, in other words, there's a focusable element, do I want this scroll behavior smooth on. That means now when I come in here and I start to search and I look for something like carrots, it'll just snap to it automatically. However, when I come up here and let's click on this one, it will slowly go to this button itself, which is great. That's what I want it to do. Now, even when I'm coming through and focusing, you can see it's just slowly uh, advancing to each of those sections because I can focus within them or I can focus on them and they're within the HTML. Now, there is a gotcha here, and that is if you have a header ID, which this one is tied to, and I click here, you can see now I'm not getting that behavior. Now, why is that? Well, it's actually because you cannot focus on a heading by default. You have to actually add some kind of tab indexing to it. So what I could do is come to my H2. Let's find this over here. I could add something like tab index equals a negative one, which puts it in the flow of the document here. And now I can come up here. And now if I click, it'll actually scroll to that, which is great. That's cool, and it works just fine. Now, there is one thing I've added in the CSS down below here that's not super important until now, and that is that I have here no outline whenever the H1 or H2 is focused. If I were to remove that, and I were to save that, and come back here, and we do the same thing, I'm going to actually get this rendered. Actually, I think I will. Let's see if it'll actually work. Okay, click here. All right, there we go. So see, if I use my keyboard, I get this uh, outline down here. Now, you can leave that on or take it off, whatever you prefer. Um, you might want to actually add some kind of box shadow like I've got here on some of these other things. So you can see on the button itself, I got this nicer box shadow. So you can customize that or you can just remove it altogether. I'm not totally sure the implications for something like screen readers, but since they're not normally going to focus on H1s and H2s anyhow, I'm trying to kind of keep the default behavior by not allowing that focus. If you know what would be best there or you have an idea, go ahead and let me know in the description. Now, the thing is I don't want to go and add tab index to all my H2s and H3s and H1s and whatever other headings I might have on the page. So let's come over here. I'm going to say const. Let's do things uh, with IDs, which is a horrible name, but you know it, it does tell us what we need, so that's good. And what we're going to do is look at anything um, with an, an ID. So this would be our headings. And I'm just going to spread these into an array. So we'll say document dot query selector all. And what I want is H2s like that. And actually, let's start with an H1. So H1, and then let me copy this down, put a comma, copy this down. And we're also looking at uh, H2s. Now, you could search for anything with an ID, but in this case, we're just going to look for headings. And then we'll say things with, with IDs like this, dot for each. And let's just say, let's call them an H for like header. And we'll say for each header, we want header dot set attribute. And what we're looking for here is tab index. And we want to set this to negative one. Now, if we did all that correctly and we come over here, we should be able to click now and it should snap to this automatically. And remember, we removed that, um, that uh, tab index over in our HTML. So in other words, we're applying this with JavaScript. Now, again, why are we doing this? Well, it's basically to help the function of searching be quicker on your page while still getting the benefit of all this scrolling behavior smooth. All right, so those are a couple things to think of when it comes to this. Again, if you have a preference on how to use this or if you have any uh, opinions about this, let me know in the comments below. But figuring out how to allow you to still access quick search while also getting the benefit of that scrolling behavior uh, was interesting to me and it helped me on a couple of sites and I thought I would share it. Well, hey, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.